This is the Earth Science Clash, and welcome back. This is the Beach Morphodynamics video. This is part two, and this video is going to discuss the energy in the waves and the production of waves, and that is going to create the different uh, beach uh, morphodynamics and the different uh, profiles and the different uh, characteristics of each beach to lead on from part one, and then look at the three main types of beaches. So looking at the wave-dominated uh, beaches, versus the tide modified and tide uh, dominated. So it's all based on the wave height, which is a product of the energy in the water, the wave production and the swell um, create these beaches. So let's look basically as a review from part one. So we know that the beach is accumulated unconsolidated material sourced mainly from uh, rivers, coastlines, and obviously the oceans. And the more swell, the more fetch, the more it could be transported by the oceans. And the coastline and the shoreline where the beach is located that long, thin strip of, of interface uh, interacting between the oceans and land, you have the deposition of all that material. And not only this material, also the energy. So the energy is going to be dissipated at this location. And dissipated is a fancy word for moving away or transferring to another form of energy. Um, uh, basically like fizzing out basically um, and so the beach is highly dynamic is ever-changing and the study of the beach profile the beach shape and different types of beaches really came around in 1977 with two gentlemen called Wright and Thom and they looked at the profiles and they started to so characterize the profile or the the shape or the morphology of each beach so that turned into morphodynamics because they realized that these shapes these profiles of the beaches were ever changing they weren't static they weren't just consistent but they were always dynamic and changing with the ever changing swell and conditions and and, and energy that is being dissipated onto the beach so as a generic a uh, profile picture or image of a beach and the interaction between, between the forces, what you have is the ocean meeting the land, and you have the creation of the beach, the coastline, the shoreline, the forebeach and the beach face and different uh, features of the beach, like the cusps and the uh, dune system, or maybe the cliffs, um, the erosion, the constructive and destructive nature of the beach and the waves but you have also the swell you have the energy interaction put in from the wind into the surface portion of the water creating the waves and the larger the fetch the larger the distance that these winds are blowing more consistently then the increased energy placed into the ocean therefore the larger the waves or the uh the larger the energy and the energy is these circles and goes down to a certain depth which is half the wavelength and the wavelength um is this between, between crest and crest so as they approach the beach the the uh the beach uh, the shoreline or connell shelf is going to get shallower and shallower and shallower until it gets to the beach where obviously the water um, stops going going up the land and you just get the beach so as it gets shallower the waves get more compact and more compressed and the actually the energy slows down and you get the breaking waves in the surf zone and the energy the energy that is provided by the ocean that is constantly hitting the beach the energy can vary or fluctuate and it can be large energy or small energy high or low energy and that can impact the profile style and 
morphology of the beach. It's all based on the energy and based on wave height, which is a product of the energy. You can't get large waves without a lot of energy and wind and production of these large waves. In general, what we have is two types two types of beach or coastline arrangement or characteristic. You can either have a closed or what they call leaky system or beach system. So a closed would be, uh, for example, like here. So this right here would be a closed beach. In comes the swell, might get some wave refraction off the headland right here, and uh, where it would like kind of angle and slow down and go towards the headland. And it might get some wave diffusion come out here in the more deeper areas into this embayment, this little bay right here. But you have this closed beach system of deposition and wave action, whether it be constructive or destructive, but it's closed. There would be no kind of transference of energy or the beach wouldn't continue around the headlands. There's no beach right here, so it's kind of like a closed system. And that's what you get in terms of, of the shape of the land kind of dictating how far and how extensive the beach is developed. So on the other side, you might have a leaky kind of system where um, you might have, let's say over here, where you have this small little, like, you know, kind of rocky section going off into the ocean. But because of the swell and the size of this could be a small, kind of a very small um, head or uh, rocky, rocky outcrop that the sand and sediment and transportation and transference can occur around this natural feature and continue into this part of the beach in uh, the foreground right here so it'll continue like this way and this we called a leaky kind of beach system or orientation and also that could happen with a very large wide open beach too with uh, various maybe like a um, uh, a jetty or a pier uh, could be just a small interruption, but, it would but there'd, there'd still be transference from either side compared to a closed one where it's just in that section. Now, this can also be linked up to littoral or near shore circulation cells and dictate whether it be asymmetrical or symmetrical and how wide the cell is, and where the rip currents are, or there's even longshore drift, depends on the angle of the swell approach. So we can also link it up to this as well. So now let's look at the three types of beaches that are controlled by the wave energy, and the wave energy will have a direct impact on the wave height, and the wave height would obviously produce the dissipating energy that comes on the shoreline to create the beaches and this will dictate the type of beach that you get is the height of the waves. So looking at wave height and that is in terms of meters and in terms of the breaking wave. So this is in the surf zone and it's going to be uh, in between maybe a bar system, a trough system, or, you know, features that are found there. Now, the wave height will be in three different categories. So the low, but WV for, uh, WH for wave height, uh, will be from obviously zero to about one meter. That'll be a low wave height of breaking wave. The medium wave height will be from one to about 2.5 meters. And then the high wave height 
would be 2.5 to around 4 or even 4 plus meters. So these three different sizes of wave heights that break in the surf zone is going to dictate the type of beach that we have. Now there are three types as a product of this wave height and the energy, the energy that it provides the system as it dissipates. So obviously the low wave height will be low energy. Compared to the high wave height would be obviously the high energy. So the three types are as follows. You've got generally your wave dominated. You have tide modified. And the last one is tide dominated. So the clear difference between the three is whether you have a wave, mostly wave action, uh, a beach that has waves that are producing the energy and they can obviously be a lot higher energy generally. The tides are more consistent, more of a cyclic pattern of rise and fall in water according to gravitational pull of the sun and the moon, different positions um, during the, uh, the year and the day. And this would be more of a subtle added energy with, with low to medium and low uh, wave heights. Now obviously the tide would be the, the driving force of the movement of the ocean and the energy, therefore, with these two tide modified and tide dominated, especially this one tide dominated, the wave height and the corresponding energy would be low. So you have your three main types wave dominated, lots of wave action, surf breakers, tide modified, and tide domination, uh, dominated. So as an overview, um, beaches are areas whereby the energy is transferred, then dissipated at the shoreline, creating the beach and deposition of material and sand, different levels, different sizes of sand grains, and create variations in the morphodynamics. So from Wright and Tom, and Tom 997, was saying that the shape and profile will change according to the energy provided in the system and acting upon the, the beach. And this creates a very dynamic environment. Now, the wave energy from the oceanite processes and the swell and the wind and the fetch will create the wave heights. Now, obviously, as the waves approach the coastline, they're going to bunch up and create and create the breakers and the surf zone. And this wave height will dictate the energy that is provided to the beach to basically shape and mold the beach according to the energy's will. Now, the three types of beaches that are created from the energy, from the wave height, uh, are wave dominated, tide modified, and tide dominated. So this top left right here would be a wave dominated beach with lar large, very high breaking uh, waves in the surf zone. Uh, this one right here in the middle would be more of a tide modified, where there's a large, larger tidal range, maybe a large uh, area of internal zone, um, and some breakers of varying heights. And this one in the bottom left would be more of a tide dominated beach whereby the waves are very small uh, and the tides are the one of the, uh, the, the tides create and produce the energy that's going to shape the beach. And that's with the sediment deposition, the destructive or constructive nature of the beach as well. So again, based on the energy and wave height, it will create these three types of beaches. Now in the next video, part three, we're going to look at each type in more detail and give you some diagrams. Um, and it's going to follow on from part two, obviously. So uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed and like, like this content and like more content, please subscribe and hit the notification button for when the uh, videos come um, are published and online. And uh, we'll see you soon.